please stand if you're able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who is present, who gives life, who calls into existence the things that do not exist. Amen. Amen. If you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? You may kneel. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned away from you, knowingly and unknowingly. We have wandered from your resurrection life. We have strayed from your love for all people. Turn us back to you, O God. Give us new hearts to our spirits, that we may find those pleasing to you and dwell in your house forever. Amen. Receive good news. God turns to you in love. I will put my spirit in you and you shall live, says our God. All your sin is forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the free and abounding gift of God's grace for you. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
Let us pray. Merciful God, the fountain of living water, you quench our thirst and wash away our sin. Give us this water always. Bring us to drink from the well that flows with the beauty of your truth through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. reading from Exodus. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for them to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water. And the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you and on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock, and water will come out of it, so that people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Messiah and Medrubah, because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, "The Lord is among, is the Lord among us or not?" The word of the Lord. Be to we shall now sing in tone Psalm ninety-five. reading from Romans. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we are still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we are still sinners, Christ died for us. 
Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, we will be saved through him for the wrath of, from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more surely have been, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel comes to us today from John, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. So Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, we will proclaim all thing, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then the disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, what do you want or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, Come and see this man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. 
Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do you not say four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and, the, and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans came from the city, believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated, and I also encourage our young friends to remain seated. I will come around. So, um... So the thing I wanted to ask my young friends, all the way in the back there, <laughs> all the way in the front here, um, were you listening to the gospel reading? Did you? Okay. So were any of the adults listening to the gospel reading? Yes. Yeah? Okay. Can you tell me um, Jesus met somebody? Who did he meet? A woman at the well. Thank you. So Jesus met someone, a woman, at the well. And um, they had this big, long chat. They talked about who to worship and where to worship. Okay? The woman um, was talking with Jesus, and Jesus told her some things about her life, and she was astonished. You know what that means? Surprised. She was very surprised. And um, they talked some more. And then the woman said, I'm going to go get my friends and have them learn about you also. Am I getting this right, adults? Yeah. And so, um, so she went and she got people from the city and brought them back to the well so they could hear Jesus too. So they all knew that Jesus was the Messiah then, right? Yes? Anybody? Yes? They got to know Jesus, right? Okay. Some of them believed that he was the Messiah, yes? Yes. Okay. Um, so here's the thing. Now I'm going to switch gears a little bit. Is everybody listening still? You still with me? Okay. Okay. Um, I, I see some people have phones in their hands. Yeah, it's okay. No, that's no. This goes along with the children's sermon. It's all right. Um, so, uh, do you know anything about videos that go viral? Yeah, yeah. Have you seen any videos that go viral? Every day on TikTok. Every day on TikTok. Even even. Organist watches videos. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, okay, got it. <laughs> okay, so your videos that go viral, that's a way to get something out there, and lots of people hear about it, right? It's kind of like Jesus meeting a woman at a well and then going and telling everybody about it. So, um, let's see. What does Jesus ask us to do? Spread the word of Jesus, absolutely. And, and spread the word and also the love, right? Right. Now, a video can go viral, right? Can a virus go viral? Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah we kind of know that. So are you going to go out right now and tell people about Jesus? 
<laughs> oh, I've got a better idea. I've got an even better idea. How many of you know how to make videos? Uh-huh, uh-huh. See if you can get a viral video about the love of Jesus. Oh, do not shake your head at me. <laughs> well, you know, it's possible. You could come up with something. Set it to music. This is my challenge for you. You have like three weeks off from school now, right? Right? Yeah. Don't you think in three weeks you could come up with an amazing video? You, yeah, you could do that. Go online to Northwest Ohio Synod, E-L-C-A dot org and watch that video from the bishop and do the sign language. Then you can learn some other songs on YouTube or wherever, um, um, the sign language for some songs. I'm telling you, you could make up some great viral videos during these three weeks. Right? To, Oh, and yeah, if you put cats in it, then they'll go viral. And get approval from your parents. Get approval from your parents. Okay. So, um, let's go ahead and pray. Dear Jesus, thank you that you teach us how to spread good news. Especially your love. Thank you for the woman at the well and help us to spread the good news. Amen. All righty. I am going to toss. You ready to catch? Okay. There you go. All right. How many adults need candy today? I'm telling you, everybody else went to the uh, store and bought toilet paper. You know this, right? Yes. Yeah. I went and bought chocolate. <laughs> Nobody, bought Nobody bought mustard greens. Can you believe that? <laughs> All right, let's pray. Good and gracious God, thank you for this day. Thank you for bringing all of us here to this house of worship. Thank you that you have kept us in safety and in health. Watch over us now, Lord, as we um, ponder your word. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you. Amen. So I'd like to focus in this morning on St. Paul. St. Paul wrote to us in our second lesson about hope. He wrote to us about hope once again, just like in many of his letters. And today's passage from Romans is one of many times that he encourages his first listeners to hope. Now, It may surprise you because we've pretty much gotten used to the idea of hope, right? I mean, we've been following Jesus for a while now, and we've gotten used to this idea that Jesus gives us hope. But it may surprise you that when Paul was writing about having hope, the predominant culture was disdainful of hope. It was believed that only the weak and the foolish would have any need of that silly thing called hope. After all, why hope when knowledge and planning and willpower would produce the results that you wanted? Sound familiar? Mm -hmm. Why hope when results could be achieved? Hope was seen as a pipe dreaming and foolish And only the uninformed or the lazy would resort to hope. But St. Paul was a man of faith. And he knew that our eternal life with God was not something we could accomplish or achieve. No amount of knowledge or planning or willpower can bring us to eternal life with God. 
Nothing can take the place of Jesus and his gift to us. Salvation through Jesus is not a pipe dream. Life through Jesus is not foolish or uninformed. We are justified by Jesus, and that is hope based on a promise we can trust. When we believe and follow the way of life Jesus gives us, we are the most well-informed and the least lazy because we are filled with hope. You and I, we are followers of Jesus, so we can be filled with the most hope. Christians are the most well-equipped to walk into places of hopelessness because we are filled with the hope Jesus gives and we are filled with the strength and promises and gifts of the Holy Spirit. We are well equipped through our faith to bring hope to the hopeless, to give people who are suffering a glimpse of the kingdom of God, to give people who are suffering a little bit of hope of the love of God. Today we're facing a challenge unlike any we've ever faced before. All around us, people are questioning or panicking or confused or in denial. Some of us are bewildered. Some of us are afraid of the unknown. But you and I, perhaps better equipped than most because we have hope. Not the foolish pipe dream that we won't be touched by COVID-19. We will all be touched in some way. From students on, three weeks, on a three-week break to extra hand washing, we will all experience something of COVID-19. Our prayer is that we will all come through this safe and healthy. And it will take the strength and hope that Jesus gives, his promised presence and gifts of the Holy Spirit, these gifts give us the ability to be level-headed and loving in the face of chaos we've already seen if you've been to the grocery store and the paper goods aisle. We build our hope on the love of Jesus. We build our community of faith around the love of Jesus. May we all be strengthened by Jesus to remain strong in hope for the sake of our community of faith so that we may be a sign, a glimpse of the kingdom of God, the love of God set loose in the world. Amen.
Please stand if you're able as we confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of living water, send your church beyond boundaries to proclaim your grace. May its witness be a source of refreshment for thirsty souls. Strengthen our voices that all people can know and believe that Jesus is truly the Savior of the world. Hear us, O God. God of living water, protect from pollution or misuse all rivers, lakes, oceans, and streams. Bless the work of those who dig wells and those who advocate for access to clean water, that all people and animals have enough to drink. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of living water, Open the hearts of leaders and authorities that they hear the cries of the suffering and act with compassion toward them. Bring peace to disputed lands and bring reconciliation to people divided by race, culture, or nationality. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of living water, mend the hearts of those who grieve, who grieve broken relationships, whether by conflict, abuse, divorce, or death. Draw near to all who are suffering in body, mind, or spirit, especially Sean Coates, and those we've named on our prayer list, and those we name now silently or aloud. Assure all those questioning your presence in the midst of doubt or suffering. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is God of living water, renew us in the promises of baptism. Join us together in worship, fellowship, and sharing your good news. Embolden us to serve others and to work for justice and peace. Hear us, O oh God. God of living water, we thank you for those who endured suffering and who now boast in the glory of God. Pour your Holy Spirit into our hearts and give us peace as we live in the hope of our salvation. <coughs> Hear us, O God. <coughs> According to your steadfast love, O God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You may exchange peace with one another.
let us pray. Holy and generous host, you set a table where we feast as friends. Prepare us to witness to your goodness with every gift you have given us to share, that all people may know your peace through Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so, joined together as one, we pray to Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God's love is poured out in Christ for you. Open yourselves to receive it. You may be seated.
please stand. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, living God, for the body and blood of your Son, which sustains us in the wilderness and the garden alike. As Christ has loved us in this feast, so send us to love Christ in our neighbors. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Holy God, speaking, spoken, and inspiring, bless you, unbind you, and send you in love and in peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, share the good news. <laughs>